you climb a tree to see the one who knows who you are, he will call out of you what no one else sees in you. And he looks at him and he's like, I know it's not where you're living. And I know it's not what you're doing, but I am calling you pure and innocent one because that's who you are going to become. The more you seek me, the more you'll see me. But the more you seek me, the more you'll see you. I want to remind you today that one of the ways that you grow one of the ways that you go to the next level is by having the appetite and having the stomach and having the hunger to want to see something that you've never seen before. I'm here to remind you today that this walk with God, this journey of being a believer, this journey of being a disciple, it is a continual commitment to be all in, to find Him, to seek after Him, to pursue Him with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. But oftentimes we forget that we're called to seek Him. The Bible tells us if we seek His face, we're going to find Him. If we seek first His kingdom, all that other stuff will be added. It tells us in James, if we draw near to Him, He'll draw near to us. It tells us in Jeremiah, if you seek me, you will find me. God's trying to let you know, I'm not somewhere out of reach, but you're going to have to do something. Thing. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to get hungry again. You're going to have to get desperate again. You're going to have to seek me again. And I think just sometimes we find Jesus or we come into a community and we stop seeking. Well, we're like, well, I got my ticket to heaven. I'm good. You know, I got my group of friends. I don't need no more. You know, I've got a comfortable life. I don't need no challenge. You know, I know how everything looks. My week's kind of predictable. I'm in control. That's the problem. You're in control. And it's time for you to stop controlling and start seeking again. And, and I think one of the things that the enemy did right at the beginning when we read the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis we read that, that Adam and Eve went from seeking God and, and hanging with God and seeking to be in His presence and seeking to be around Him and seeking to, to stroll in the cool of the day with Him like the Bible tells us they did. When sin entered, they stopped seeking and they started hiding. And if you ain't seeking God, there's something about you that's hiding from God. And so we hide behind our busyness. We hide behind our pride. We hide behind our failures. We hide behind our insecurity. We hide behind, you know, well, it just isn't for me. Or we make excuses and they become places of hiding. But you are not a hider. You are a seeker. You're called to seek. And seeking is very different than hiding. <laughs> My son has always loved the game hide and seek. And when he was little, we would play it often. And if you are a parent in here, new to parenting, let me tell you, hide and seek is the best game you could ever encourage your children to play. Number one, it's free. And number two, they disappear for a long time and they're quiet. <laughs> what about this is wrong. So our kids loved hide and seek. And so they would go. And one day my son said, can we play hide and seek? I was sure, yeah. So him and his sister, they went off hiding. I found his sister. And as I was seeking Noah, my phone rang. And so I took a phone call and I got involved in this phone call. And I was on the phone for a while. And then after the phone call, the laundry started making the noise. Let me know the load was done. So now I'm taking the laundry out and now I'm putting another load in. And about 40 minutes had gone by. And I suddenly remembered, oh my word, I am playing hide and seek. And I am supposed to be seeking and there's still one child hiding. And so finally, when I got back to seeking, I found my son who had climbed underneath his bed. And because he'd been waiting so long, he'd fallen asleep. And I felt the Spirit of God remind me of that picture to say there are some things that have fallen asleep because you've stopped seeking. There's some dreams, there's some destinies, there's some relationships, there's some opportunities and they've fallen asleep. They were there for you. They were right there for you, but you just got satisfied and you stop seeking and you stop pursuing. And the thing is, it's not going to come find you. You have to go find it. 
And so I want to stir you back up, church, today to get your hunger back, to get your your thirst back for the things of God. Like, are you seeking Him with all your heart or is it just a little of your heart? So I want to take us to a story in the Bible where seeking transformed someone's life. They chose to seek and because they chose to seek, they found This person went from hidden to found, from confused to clear, from isolated to included, from a fraud to a follower. His name was Zacchaeus. And we've often heard Zacchaeus' story if we've been around church for any length of time. But how we've heard often it taught is that Jesus went and found Zacchaeus. That is not the case. It was because Zacchaeus chose to go find Jesus that Zacchaeus met Jesus. There was something that happened inside of this man's heart that began a journey that changed his life forever. And I'm telling you, the same has to happen in our hearts on a regular basis if we want to move into the spaces and places that God has ordained for us. In Luke 19, the story plays out. And it says that Jesus entered Jericho and he was passing through. Note that. He wasn't planning to stop. This was not, this is not where he was camping up. He was just passing through. You know, you can cause God to stop when you seek him. You can draw something out of him that others do not draw out of him when you seek him because he was planning just to pass through. But that day, Zacchaeus who was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. So now we know that this man has position and he has money and he has influence. So this guy has what you would think you want to spend your time seeking. Well, I want influence and I want money and I want want to have that kind of standing in my life and in my career. He had all that stuff and he still is not full. Nor will you be when you have all that stuff because that stuff can't fill you in the way that only God can fill you. And so he has position and he has title. And you know what? That's what he was hiding behind. Some of you are hiding behind your title. It's the first thing you tell when people meet you. Well, this is what I do and this is who I am. And it's like, you know, I don't want to know what you do. I want to know who you are. I don't want to know how great your career is. I want to know, how are you? I don't want to bump into your title or your position or your wealth or whatever it is that you've decided to put up front so you can hide further back. So Zacchaeus is at home. He's wealthy. He has influence. But verse 3 says, but he wanted to see who Jesus was. I mean, he'd heard about Jesus. People had talked to him about this guy called Jesus. But on this particular occasion, there was something in him that said, I want to see for myself. I want to know how tall he is. I want to know how handsome he is. I want to know what he sounds like. I want to know what he looks like. I want to know what his hair's like. I want to know what he's dressed like. Like I want to see for myself. And I'm telling you, some of you need to reawaken your curiosity. There are aspects of Jesus that you have never seen, but you will never see them while you're sat at home behind your title and your money and your position. You'll only see them if there's something in you that begins to seek him again. I turned 50 in a couple of weeks time and I have never been more committed to seeking than I am right now. I'm like, I know the stuff in here I've not seen yet. I know the stuff in this Bible I'm yet to preach. I know there's aspects of him I've not seen as my provider and as my restorer and as the lifter of my head. I know there's miracles in him that I've not seen yet. And there's a curiosity in me. And some of you, I'm here to shake you up today. Say, why are you living at this level when there's a whole nother level for you? But you're going to have to seek to see. Seekers seek to see. And he's like, I want to see him. I want to see him. When was the last time you jumped out of bed on a Tuesday morning and said, I want to see him. I want to see him today. I want to feel him today. I want to hear from him today. 
gets out of his house. He's like, I want to seek Jesus. And so verse 3, he wants to see him. But then it says, but he was short. And all the short people said, amen. See, there's even verses in the Bible for you. We understand your situation. I really want to see him, but I'm short. I really want to see him, but I'm busy. I really want to see him, but I'm not sure I really want to be that all in. I really want to see him, but my calendar doesn't collide with when I need to be there to do the certain thing. Like, I really want to see him, but I don't know that I want to give. I really want to see him, but I don't know that I want to admit I need help. We all have a but. He was short and there was a crowd. So the Bible says he has an obstacle. If you want to seek to see him, there's always an obstacle. There's always something you're going to have to push past and get past. Whether that's confidence or insecurity or pride or a failure, I don't know, or a disappointment. But you're going to have to push past it. And it says he was short and he couldn't see over the crowd. So guess what? He ran ahead and he climbed a tree. I'm going to say to some of you, it is time to climb a tree. I, I, I want to see him, but I'm insecure. It's time to climb a tree. You're going to have to do something that you have not done before to see something that you have never seen before. I, 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 I want to see him as my provider, but I don't want to tithe. You're going to have to climb a tree. Bible says, test me in this and I'll prove to you. I'm your provider. Well, can you not prove it before I tithe? No, that's the tree I'm asking you to climb. Well, I want to see him, you know, as the one that, you know, includes me and, and fathers me. Yeah, you're going to have to climb the tree called being isolated to getting involved, to actually showing up. Well, can't he do it in the privacy of my own house? No, you're going to have to climb a tree first if you want to see. He climbs a tree. And the Bible says he climbs a tree and he's up the tree. And as, he up the, as he's up the tree, it says this. It says, when Jesus reached that spot, what spot? The spot where he knew someone is seeking to see me. I don't think Jesus had a security team. Okay, Jesus, three trees down on the right, wealthy man. Wealthy man, good for the ministry. Let's get him down, shake some hands. Let's get him on Instagram. Let's get this guy involved. He would be good for business. No. Jesus is, remember, passing through. Lots of people. But all of a sudden, something in him stops. And he looks up. And the one that's seeking to see him, he lets that person know, I also see you. And then Jesus says this out loud, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Why is that so important? Well, Jesus knows his name. But not does he just know his name. Jesus is choosing to use that name because the meaning of the name Zacchaeus is pure and innocent one. Wait a minute. This man is not living a pure and innocent life. He is stealing from people. He is cheating from people. He is lying to people. But when you climb a tree to see the one who knows who you are. He will call out of you what no one else sees in you. And he looks at him and he's like, I know it's not where you're living and I know it's not what you're doing, but I am calling you pure and innocent one because that's who you are going to become. The more you seek me, the more you'll see me, but the more you seek me, the more you'll see you. Some of you need people in your life who don't call you by your label or your title or your Instagram handle, but they call out of you what God himself placed in you. And you're going to have to seek to see him in different places than you've been hanging. Well, I don't want to go to join. Why not? What have you got to lose? Well, I feel like I know it all. No, you don't. 
And if you do, well, then we need you to teach, John. Oh, I want to, you know, I want to be involved, but I'm not sure the time's right. When is the time going to be right? Get your excuse out of the way, climb that tree and start to seek to see him. And I promise you, he will stop right there and he will call something out of you. You got to seek to see, but then secondly, you got to seek to stay. Because the next thing Jesus says is, hey, come down. Why? Because I must stay at your house. I mean, Jesus has got a schedule, all right? He's got things going on. He's got a busy calendar. But Jesus knows if you want to seek to see me, you're going to also have to seek to stay with me. Listen, church is not the hokey pokey. I put myself in, put myself out, in, out, in, out, shake it up. No. That's not what this is. you got to seek to stay. Jesus is like, you want to see me? Now you're going to have to stay. You're going to have to stay at the table. You're going to have to stay and have a conversation. You're going to have to stay and eat food with me. You're going to have to stay in the house with me. Why? Because it's not until you stay, you actually begin to find. I am not embarrassed to admit that every now and again, my entire family still play hide and seek. No one's a child anymore, but we're a child at heart. And so we have friends that we've been friends with for years and their boys are grown. But every now and again, we'll say, let's play hide and seek. So all of our adult children and all the adults, we play hide and seek. And on this one particular occasion, I was hiding. And my friend of 37 years, I know everything in her house. I'm like, I know exactly where I'm going to hide. So I went up to the cupboard that has all their ski coats in it. And they don't open it until ski season. And I got in that cupboard and I climbed in the corner. And I didn't just hide. I mean, I hid. Like I put stuff on top of me and boots on top of me and jackets on top of me. Let me tell you something. My friend opened that cupboard door, that closet door, at least four times. She opened the door. She's like, no, not in here. Walked away, came back, looked again. No, not in here. If she had just stayed for a few seconds, she would have heard, because I was dying in there. She would have seen stuff moving in a cupboard that should not move on its own. Because when you stay, you have to start lifting stuff up to find stuff. When you stay, you begin to peel back layers. And that's why some of you don't want to stay in church. Because someone's going to peel back a layer and realize your marriage ain't perfect. Someone's going to peel back a layer and realize you got a little attitude problem. So I don't want to stay because when I visit Shoreline, everybody loves me. But if I stay at Shoreline, people might really see me. That's why you're not growing because you won't stay. Your money won't stay. Your giving won't stay. Your serving won't stay. Your worship won't stay. Your, your, your discipline won't stay. You, you, you're not staying and that's why you're not seeing. And you've got to be willing to seek to see, but also to seek to stay. I mean, you're about to go into a season where there's a lot of moving going on. You're moving into new premises and new buildings. And we need you to seek to stay. Because in the moving season, there's a lot of things that are moving. But one of the things that should not be moving is your planting in the house. Is your commitment to the house. Is your giving to the house that has to stay. I've been serving God all my life. I've been preaching for over 21 years. I'm with the same husband after 31 years. I'm raising my kids who are now in their 20s. I'm preaching now with more fire than I preached back then. Why? Because I seek to stay. That's where the good stuff is. Stop being a tourist in the kingdom of God. I just went to Rome recently and in Rome you go past the tourist shop And at the other side of the street, there's like tape cordoning off an area where someone is doing a dig. And we got church people who are going to the tourist shop, going to the gift shop, give me a trinket in the word, give me a little thing that I can take home to show that I'm a believer for Jesus. And over here, we got people that are digging 
Not to get a trinket, but to find treasure. You want treasure? You gotta stop going to the tourists and you gotta start getting in the trenches. Some of you got trinket relationships. No, you want real relationships, ones that I'm talking about that last friends of 38 years, people that serve alongside you in God, people that stick by you in a storm. You gotta start digging for those. You don't find those in the gift shop. You find them in a small group where everyone's socially awkward. You're like, these are not my people. No, but they will become your people if you start to dig alongside each other. Some of you follow and unfollow, and you think that's how relationships work. Some of you follow me on Instagram after this meeting, and then when I post something you don't like, you'll just unfollow me again, because you can do that from a distance. Can't do that when you're in a small group, because they're going to come and call you, say, where were you? We missed you. You're like, exactly. That's why I don't want to go. Seek to see, but you got to seek to stay. And this is the reason why. Because when you seek to stay, something inside you stands. <laughs> I'm telling you. Zacchaeus is sat at the table. He's staying in the presence of the one who knows him better than anyone could ever know him. And as he sat and he stays, all of a sudden, it says in verse 8, Zacchaeus stood up. No one told him to. No one asked him to. And then Zacchaeus says, Lord, look, here and now. I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What's happening? The real Zacchaeus is standing up. The pure and innocent one that, that he was already called out as being is all of a sudden seeing in himself what he couldn't see in himself before. He's like, I am not a cheat and I am not a liar. I am not someone that withholds. I'm someone that wants to give. I want to pay back. I want to be generous. I want to contribute. And he's gone from observing to now participating in the miracle. Something inside him stood up. And I'm telling you, there's something inside some of you and it needs to stand up. There's a leader in you and it needs to stand up. There's a teacher in you and it needs to stand up. There's a giver in you and it needs to stand up. There's a shepherd in you and it needs to stand up. There's a young person leader in you and it needs to stand up. There's a discipler of the disciples in you and it needs to stand up. But the only way you get to standing is through seeking. And I know that I know that God has called me. Why? Because I seek Him with all my heart. And when I seek Him, I see Him. And when I see Him, I see what He put on the inside of me. And it causes me to stand. Listen, I'm an introvert. I'm awkward socially. Green rooms make me have hives. I don't know how to do all of that stuff, but I can't help this thing in me from standing. Because this is the God thing in me that I didn't know was in me. And I'm telling you, some of you have this in you and you're going to have to learn how to stand. It's time for you to seek again so you can see again. It's time for you to seek again so you can stay again. It's time for you to seek again so you can stand again. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And I just feel like there's a season shift. And God had me come here on this Sunday to say to you, it's time to climb your tree. Like some of you need to literally go to join today. Well, I made plans. There you go again. With your I'm small, I'm short. 
You need to go find one of the leaders and say, hey, I, I, I need to start giving. I need to start involving. Hey, you said you're moving a building. Guess what? I'm in the removal company. Hey, guess what? I have contacts who can help in this season. Hey, I have a way to help make this easier. Some of you, you need to stand and start being the person that God is assigning you to be in this season. There are answers in this room if we just stand. This is a season, Charline to seek again all across the house in every location who wants to stand to our feet you know the last verse of this entire story in verse 10 Jesus says these words the son of man came to what to seek and to save the lost if our father is a seeker then we should have our father's heart he is a seeker. Therefore, we should be seekers. And so with eyes closed on every campus right now, where is it time for you to seek again? Some of you have been serving God a long time, but it's time to seek again. Where is it time for you to stand? Where is it time for you to stay? God has given you His instruction, but now you must choose what you will do. And as eyes are closed, I just want to take one more moment for anyone that's here today. And you are like Zacchaeus, you have been hiding, maybe hiding behind your busyness or hiding behind your title or your badge or your shame or your sin or your failure. I don't know, but today if you would seek to see him like Zacchaeus, he will find you and he will call out of you what he already has placed in you. And maybe you've never called on his name. But maybe you have, and you have stopped seeking Him, stopped pursuing Him. Right now in this moment, as eyes are closed, if you're saying, I need to seek the face of God for the first time, or I need to get back to that be my first priority, I just want you to sit, slip your hand in the air. I'm going to pray for you in a second, but you're just saying it's time for me to get back. He came to seek and save he came to seek and save. Whether you've drifted or whether you're far from Him or whether you've never made this decision for yourself, so many hands right now. I just want you to take that hand and put it on your heart. <laughs> and I'm just going to pray a prayer and at the end we're all going to say amen. I'm going to help you in this moment seal this decision. You're seeking to see Him, but let me tell you, my friend, as you seek to see Him and that hand's on your heart, He is stopping right there underneath your tree and He sees you. He sees who you are and who you're called to be. He sees you pure. He sees you innocent. He sees you forgiven. He sees you free. He sees you set apart. He sees you chosen. He sees you loved. He sees you called. He sees you qualified. So God, as every hand is on every heart that's making this decision, God, I pray today that you would meet them right where they are. Flood them with forgiveness. Crown them with your grace and mercy. God, let them see a glimpse of what you see in them. Be the lifter of their heads today, the restorer of their souls today. Let hope arise afresh today. Let vision be reignited today. Let passion come back to your people today. God, we thank you that you are stopping right now under every tree and calling them by name. You are sons and daughters of the living God. So God, today we receive a new start. We receive and we commit to come down and stay. Stay at the table. Stay in the conversation. Stay in the way of salvation. Stay in that place of grace and forgiveness until something in us stands. We thank you for it. I thank you for this house and all you're doing. We give it all to you, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.